Okay, hello and welcome everyone to this session. I'm really excited to be welcoming two amazing people from our community for this session on how distributed marketing automation can elevate global franchises. So today we've got Jaden Guthrie, who's product marketing manager at Acquia, who is joining us from Florida and is up very, very early or very, very late, whichever way. So thank you so much for joining us. And we have Nidhi Bhardwaj, who's SME and product manager at Material, who's joining us from India. So let's use the emojis to show a big welcome to our speakers. And with that, I'm going to hand straight over to you guys to get started on your presentation. Hi, hey, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It's very good to be here and um, looking forward to a great, great interactive session with all of you here. Let me dive straight into the session. And here we go. All right, okay. So our uh, session is about how distributed marketing automation can elevate global franchisee. Before we really begin to uh, with our session, I would like to introduce ourselves who we are and uh, the respective organizations that we belong to. So I'm going to tell you a quick bit about material, who's material. We create transformative experience now. That's, that's something that you hear almost every day. But what we really do is that we are a global strategy insights, design, and technology partner to the companies who are really looking at customer centricity in its essence. Um, there are a lot of organizations, and we are aware that they are trying to find relevance in a digital-first, customer-led world, which is, which is a new world now. Now, how do we do that? We follow a science and systems approach. We leverage proprietary science-based tools to enable human understanding. We create customer-centric business models and experiences. And we also deploy measurement systems between the businesses and the people they serve. We transform complex challenges of the clients into actionable solutions through systemic ap application of science. Now, uh, this, is, this is something that we do at the core. Along with this, what we do is we figure out the meaning to the data, which is, which is totally uh, submerged under the mounds of the, the irrelevant data that comes with uh, a lot of engagement, a lot of consumption, content consumption, and a lot of interactions that we see online. Now, we know as a fact that best, best customer service centric organizations have a very few things which are common across the board. Now, what first thing that they have is they use insights as capabilities rather than a service. So a lot of people, a lot of systems are gathering data, driving insights, but the true imbibing of those insights is what the customer centric organizations really excel at. They operationalize insights instead of utilizing them. They are transformative about their data. The intertwined brand experiences and businesses lead a way forward for them to implement everything that they visualize. And of course, they have a core transformational agenda. So this is what we do. We want to understand what people think, what people feel, what do they do across every transactions. And this enables us to turn transactional moments into transformative relationships, which speed up the innovation to market, helping our clients outperform their competitors. I'll quickly hand over um, this, this next, next slide to Jaden, and we'll know more about what Aquia does. Thank you so much, Nidhi. Yes, so... Um, we are a digital experience platform. So Aquia specializes in all things scale, um, speed, and governance. So while our core is primarily uh, Drupal, uh, so we do web hosting, we are also um, very plugged into the modic community as well. 
Um, and we're very excited to be here and speak to you all today. Um, and so you will learn more about what we have to offer as far as personalization, uh, marketing automation, uh, customer data, um, customer data consolidation, things of that nature. And so, um, yeah, we really have a wide set of tools that both marketers and developers can utilize in order to bring digital experiences to their constituents or customers. And um, so this is our agenda for today. Um, I'm going to kick us off by talking a little bit more about the problem. Um, and then Nidhi will discuss the use case and the solution that was implemented and the success that Material was able to have um, implementing our marketing automation solution. And then we will move into Q&A. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little more about the problem and why all of this is important. So yeah, I think that we can all acknowledge the difficulties that marketers face in establishing brand consistency and brand governance in today's digital world. Um, when to nurture leads and engage customers can be really challenging to account for things like budget and scale and efficiency. Um, and if a company fails to establish and implement best practices and guidelines, then marketing teams are ultimately hindered from operating at their full capacity. And I know I have experienced this firsthand, and I'm sure some of you have also experienced this as well. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, so in the current state, you have campaign managers that aren't given the right tools or the right infrastructure in order to adequately score leads. Um, and they are still doing a ton of manual labor, uh, which is very unsustainable for a company that is ultimately looking to grow. Uh, you also have marketing operations managers that struggle to govern digital experiences at scale. Um, and when I say this, I, I mean the ability to configure workflows and control access and smoothly orchestrate internal operations um, across varied teams and brands. And then um, third, you have you also have marketing analysts, and these teams are often plagued with data silos, and they have difficulty viewing the entire customer journey from one central location. And so, um, all of these teams have a unique subset of problems. Um, and I think it actually boils down to one underlying issue, which is marketing automation sprawl. And this happens when a company's existing tech stack is completely misaligned uh, from their goals and their needs. And I think that with marketing automation sprawl, your ability to present a cohesive brand to your prospective customers or constituents will inevitably be challenged. Uh, yeah. So uh, there are three ways that marketing automation sprawl manifests itself. Um, the first, being impossible oversight. And this refers to organizations with different region specific or business unit specific 
uh, sub-teams. And the, the essence of the brand is lost in translation because the messaging and the positioning will vary from team to team. And uh, secondly, you also have GDPR compliance, and this is pretty self-explanatory. So regulations are continuously evolving and different standards will apply to different regions. So if you're a global franchise and you're managing one giant contact base, that becomes all the more difficult. And then uh, lastly, we have many map contracts. Um, so having to account for separate contracts within a marketing automation platform. And I, I think all of the above really threaten your ability to fully be a unified brand. Next slide, please. Thank you. So one interesting statistic that came from Gartner very recently was that 75% of CMOs reported that their marketing organization is uh, facing increasing pressure to cut their MarTech spend in order to deliver better ROI. And I think that this statistic is very telling and a bit disconcerting for marketers to hear because on the one hand, uh, it is reflective of how difficult it has become for CMOs to prove the efficacy of their campaigns and activities, especially given the current macroeconomic trends. And then on the other hand, it can be really frustrating to hear because if I am a marketer and I see that our MarTech budget is being reduced, I'm going to ask, how are we going to maximize ROI? And, you know, we aren't seeing value with our existing stack. Um, and now our ability to spend is significantly tighter. So what does that mean for our team. And so, oh, um, if you could just go back to the previous slide. Thank you, Nitty. Uh, from the data we've seen, I think it's safe to say that CMOs and tech buyers are continuing to invest in things like brand activation and campaign management moving forward. And if you know, if, if it is to a lesser degree, it's necessary to focus on lean, but also extensible tooling. Uh, next slide, please. All right. So when looking to invest in brand governance at scale, um, I really do think that it's paramount to invest in the entire customer life cycle. So you should be automating based on where the customer is in their journey with your brand. Uh, those who are just becoming familiar with your brand need custom ads and things like personalized landing pages um, because they need content that actually entices them and feels relevant. And additionally, distributed teams need to have access to a single source of truth. Um, you know, lead generation teams need to be able to analyze cost per lead and where their tactics are actually profitable. And um, additionally, customer success teams also need the same level of visibility when managing those post-purchase clients. Next slide, please. So we know that marketing automation tools can automate workflows to increase efficiency. And as a marketer, I need a tool that is going to help me nurture leads through the entire funnel all the way to conversion. And so uh, let's take the key capabilities of marketing automation, things like contact management and segmentation and lead scoring, and let's 
multiply it. Thank you. Uh, maintaining governance really is a challenge for organizations when dealing with best practice at scale, um, balancing operations with agility and with repeatability is the key to uh, reducing costs as well as risk and improving time to market. And I think that this is where distributed marketing automation comes in because a distributed marketing tool really is essential for multi-brand and multi-location organizations to be able to establish brand compliance, consistency, and campaign management. Um, and this is the distributed piece of distributed marketing. So when using Campaign Factory in tandem with Campaign Studio, marketers are able to create and host hundreds of instances from one central location. And I think that this is what makes the operational layer of ADXP so powerful because no matter how spread out an organization is across brands and teams and geographies, marketers will have access to customized and templated marketing materials, and they will be able to automate campaign delivery at scale. All right, Thank, thanks, Jaden. Now let's take a look. We saw how marketing distribution automation uh, can really help us. Now let's see a, a use case where we implemented this and what were we trying to achieve. So um, let me introduce you to the client first. The client that we worked for is a, a personal care consumer goods company. This has been in the, um, in the market since almost 70 years. And this is one of the market leaders across personal different personal care uh, categories. So they have flagship brands in their categories, which which is personal care, um, uh, personal grooming, which had uh, healthcare, which had uh, personal care, healthcare. So the different categories they were operating in, and they um, they almost have about eight flagship brands across eight categories in the market. They have their sales and operations in over 60 countries and with the entire brand food portfolio and the category portfolio that they had, they own about 40 plus digital websites, which were, uh, which were primarily e-commerce website for their brands, as well as the brochure websites and the product catalogs and uh, certain marketing sites as well. Now, uh, what is it that this consumer really wanted to do? They wanted to move. They've been in the market for 70 years. They have significant offline and online presence. The consumers relate to their brands well. And this operating model was working absolutely fine with them until we see there is evident transformation of global consumers to an experience-led economy. So it isn't just transactional anymore. It needs to transform to an experience-led economy. Even if you are a major offline um, brand, which which goes through retail stores, which goes through uh, respective uh, channels offline, you now today the consumer requires brands which are available online, which they can read about online, which they can connect with online. And this is this is the need that our client was trying to address and totally go into overhauling their their operating model, their marketing model to experience led model. With this vision in mind, they obviously needed to really transform, have a fundamental infrastructure, tech infrastructure, which supports this, trans uh, this transition. And we were, we were beginning, we started with the crawl phase of crawl, walk, and run. Now, um, considering this, this vision, the first major decision that they had taken was to move off of the e-commerce website so right now they had good engagement with their uh, with their consumers who will visit their websites will almost all of their products had their websites which are which were e-commerce driven websites and they felt now is the time that you outsource this e-commerce to third party multi retailer uh, driven cart management so off board the cart management and on board the experience centric 
journeys is what they initially looked at and we were working towards creating the foundational tech stack to support their uh, to support their vision with this uh, with this the um, the overall ecosystem it's important to understand their ecosystem it's not that they did not have a fragmented um, tech stack they did have good tools in place what what was required was to really weave it all in together and uh, and go to a different tool go to a different different system in case the uh, in case the need uh, the user needs it or we need it to do better so what they had were channels which were fully operational what they also had is disjoint between these channels so they had multi channel engagements which were disjointed they had digital assets all of them in place however these were non scalable because they were primarily commerce driven and they were created such they had a huge uh, data data set with them every transaction had um they data consumer data which is getting accumulated but this data was rendered useless because they had no way how to channelize this data similarly when we when you move from um, uh, an offline brand to an e-commerce brand to a um, consumer who is asking for more instead of just commerce then you your uh, commerce segre uh, stagnates and that's that's what was happening with them what was happening at the customers end here there was inconsistent brand experience across channels there was a deficit in a uniform brand voice there is there were increasing mart expense all the platform the tools everything had licensing cost to it and it wasn't really yielding the roi that they were looking at there was a limited customer view where you are collecting silo data from there is a silo data of customer behavior there is a silo data of customer preference and you you were not able to bring in the uh, the entire data set in a cohesive understandable data format that a customer should have and of course team across geographies 60 geographies multiple brands in each geographies there were tedious team collaborations so what was the solutions that these uh, that our client was looking for first was getting the digital assets scalable how do they scale the uh, they connect the one asset to another where the data and the journeys flow cohesively from one asset to another so to cater to this we created the open source replicable customizable drupal ecosystem which was integrated with their uh, with the motic crm that we used for them it had the capability to track the user behavior across different channels orchestrate their outreach as per the relevant insights so all of their brands were migrated from their respective e-commerce site we we had brands on wordpress we had brands on magento all of these brands were uniformly brought on to drupal websites along with this migration we also overhauled the content and the creatives for these these uh, uh, brands and we overhauled the entire user experience right from the design to the choice of colors to the templates that were chosen to how the information flew on every page to how the um, the entire architecture was information architecture was was something that was overhauled for their respective brands with this we also implemented um, a uniform brand experience where we were putting together the visuals every brand of their portfolio was a unique stand alone and a very uh, niche brand with a great uh, user acceptance so if a female hygiene brand came came in place then it needed to have a scientific aspect which was very well researched brand along with the creative aspect with which the woman can correlate so all of these surveys and the and the user experience were woven together into the team into the creative into content into overall communication that got together across channels with this we also um, integrated a third party e-commerce retail channel now the reason a third party retail channel was selected was it not only makes cart management easier 
you can manage the abandonments, you can manage the win bags, you can manage how your brand is getting taken up. You understand the category insights. You also understand how these categories are getting forecasted with respect to different categories and different products. You get your competitor information. So a third party uh, retail channel not just makes it convenient for you to manage the card, but also gives you a good, good understanding of how the entire category is behaving how the market is expected to move in the next six months, in the next one year. And what are these? So, so you have a, a strong hold of the pulse of that category and that market, and you know when to be agile about your decisions and how to move your brand across. So we integrated this third-party e-commerce retail channel with the website. So there is no loss technically when you, and it is expected, all of us marketers really expect that if you're moving from one platform to another, if you're moving one experience to another, you expect certain drop-offs. And you expect a person day that is going to be, you'll have to have win back strategy in place to retain these people who were already there on your platform. So uh, this, this is something that, that is expected. However, we try to mitigate that to a large extent. And uh, we, while we move to a customer engagement and experience-based UX on the website, we also integrated this um, this commerce e-commerce retail a third-party uh, retail uh, platform with the website where we made sure that, that there are no drops drop-offs. We can track where the drop-offs are and. Uh, since it was a multi-channel retail uh, integration, we knew that the customer is moving from one familiar platform, which is their website, to another familiar platform, for example, in Amazon, for example, uh, a Target. So a customer is seeing the, it, it was a very, very small delta where a customer is moving from a website-led experience to a retailer experience. Now, this platform empowered the brand with cut management, category purchase, behavior insights, and gave them a chance to test how this entire uh, movement is going to work out. So uh, when, when we made this migration, the entire strategy needed to involve the entire customer cycle, starting from uh, evaluation, awareness, consideration, to, exp uh, to uh, conversions, and followed by loyalty. When we integrated this uh, platform, this platform was Micmac. It was getting together all the retail channels, commonly used retail channels that this brand had. And uh, we made sure that the existing customers are drawing experiences uh, with respect to what their original experience at the website was. They understood the brand. They understood the, uh, the components. They understood the, uh, the purchase cycle. They managed the subscription. All of these were right in place. Along with that, for new users, we had this consistent experience uh, to understand this brand right from the word go. Along with this, we also uh, had the, uh, the deep links to to different channels where they could figure out how a brand, what is, a, uh, what is it that a brand stands for? What are the brand ethos? What is the communication? And we were getting those platform and engagement insights using Micmac for uh, new customer acquisition. With new customer acquisition, we also had to uh, streamline the activations across different channels of existing in the new customers, which which happened with uh, uh, with Micmac in place. We also had a few tools which were uh, collecting the feedbacks and the, and the uh, overall brand communication across different channels. So those were getting uh, getting tracked and uh, they were they were brought into a single platform where everything was getting tracked, getting watched, getting and was made sense of. With this, for existing customers, uh, we were looking at personalized and contextual engagements. We were looking at the relevant conversations. We uh, we were trying to figure, using Motic as a platform, we, we were trying to figure how can we put together one customer who is one brand's customer and figure out the opportunities to upsell, figure out the opportunities to engage more. So we knew... We were getting the rich customer profiling that was continuing to happen on the Motic platform. <clears throat> and uh, these profiles, these browsings, these engagements were making the profiles richer and richer and giving the insights about engaging a specific customer for more than one brand. With 
these engagements, we had also implemented a preference center on the website. We used a uh, platform called Wing, which was uh, monitoring the, the preferences, the engagements, the communication preferences, the content preferences, the product preferences. And we had integrated it with, uh, with Motic. So we know what a customer is doing moment to moment. And we could have meaningful insights to deliver them, the customer, uh, the contextual communication and journeys. We also used Motic uh, platform, which was which was good for us in setting up certain journeys. Certain journeys are constant, like you know, onboarding, customer onboarding journey, um, the the welcome journeys, the survey behaviors. These are standard journeys that every brand follows. And you, uh, when we use Motic as a platform, this gave us an opportunity to set up these journeys and automate automate with different teams. So we had creative, we had content, we had legal, we had brand teams which came together, designed these journeys, we set them up once and for all. And they, they kept, the entire group kept uh, going in a very agile and a very uh, pretty convenient manner where we tweaked when we had to and we let it be as we had to. I'll also come at one of the use cases that we had implemented using Motic, which was which, which reduced our uh, turnaround time. <clears throat> so overall, having Motic as a platform, we met the customer where they are, whether it was a website, whether it was socials, we understood their motivations and preferences on the websites. We also delivered a UX which aligned with the brand. It was not a run of the mill uh, UX. We were able to communicate the brand value in a very lucid, very acceptable manner. We gave these clients a place to converge the uh, activations. So wherever you are, you could really converge all your activations and enrich your user data, track the user behavior and facilitate getting the right insights that you needed for further promotions. We also enable the assets to capture the customer feedback, grievances, and design a mechanism to reduce the turnaround time. How we did, did that? We uh, integrated the customer feedback form on the website with Motic, and we automated the journey, the triggering of this message to the, um, to the customer service team. So as soon as somebody filed a given somebody, and which is, it, it is a pretty big regulatory requirement, as soon as a customer is filing a grievance, giving a feedback, which needs to go to the customer service team, the, this form triggered a message to the customer service team and the ticket was created to be able to address uh, these grievances. As soon as the ticket is created, there were automations in place to send out an acknowledgement, send out the resolution, and uh, not just send them out, but also to drag them. So this was one of the one of the uh, big use cases to have grievances and uh, compliance in place for a personal care and a healthcare organization. How did this automation work for us? We provided a cohesive, personalized customer experience across the channels. There were consistencies. The brand guidelines about the creative, about the content, were fed into a single system. And across the team throughout the globe, they were able to adhere to it. There was efficient purchase and order realization with Micmac, where cart management was offloaded to a third party vendor without really impacting any of the commerce that the brand had. We drove organizational efficiencies with the creative content, marketing, compliance, and the customer services team uh, having a single source of truth for all the brand activations and engagements. Uh, we drove these efficiencies. We also activated data for enriched engagement with our third party integrations and getting the user behavior flowing into the Motic as a platform. What it did too, we had improved ROI. Uh, the outsourced order realization card management, having a complete view of category trends and insight is, is a, a base layer, a fundamental layer of activating newer opportunities, of managing the existing overheads better. We had consolidated zero party data. So entire e-commerce data, the customer uh, engagement data that we had on the website, we imported the data into Motic. We had augmented customer profiling, data enrichment that's happening, and therefore we could target them better. We created an automated 
360 view of the customer, who created smart journeys, data integrations, and revamped dynamic content design. What did it provide? It provided a cohesive brand technical marketing infrastructure to grow into a unified brand identity, streamline the customer experience and brand experiences across the channels. Net, net value realization was the reduction in technology licensing cost, uniform architecture, which included multiple geographies, integrated content orchestration across multiple brands, where we almost created 190 campaigns, which targeted over 180 segments within the Motic ecosystem. We streamlined automated global operations and greater efficiency across the geography with right controls and tracking. And we had insight-based mitigation and win-back strategy for customer drop-offs and cart abandonment on the Micmac platform, where we could retarget the uh, dropping of customers and uh, uh, provided an infrastructure to win them back. With this, I would like to close our uh, our deck and have the conversation with you all, and I invite questions in. Okay. Okay, so, uh, wonderful. Thank you for that amazing presentation. And I will just bring up one question we have from the floor from Daniel Lord. Given the rise of artificial intelligence, how do you think this will fit into the cohesive marketing automa automation ecosystem? I'll take that up. Uh, so, Daniel, I do think that artificial intelligence is a big asset to the to the entire marketing ecosystem. Uh, while it does provide us the tactical uh, tactical efficiency, we also think that there we still have time where we are we put together the the insights, the strategy, the business fitment. What is it that your business require uh, requires, and the agile implementation. Artificial intelligence is yet to get there once it goes there of course it's going to be a different situation however once we've decided where we are with respect to strategy with respect to fitment with respect to what is the magic tool that we require what is the ecosystem that my specific business needs once i have this visibility it is relatively easy to bring in automatic uh, um, artificial intelligence and get the tactics rolling out faster than usual so overall, uh, AI does reduce my tactical time. It's yet to get uh, there for the strategy and, and the thinking part of the decision making. Awesome. Thank you for answering that so thoroughly. I think it's a really fascinating area, actually, how much of an impact AI has. And, but I think it's also important, like, like you're saying, like there's some bits that we still haven't quite got there with you know so i don't think we're at risk of the robots taking over our jobs quite yet <laughs> but we'll see. Great. great um so here's a question that i had so how do you manage the operations on the content side of having this franchise model that you've talked about when you're working across the diverse geographical regions because i guess that must be quite a challenge yes so i'll take that question um so as most of you know, a franchise operates as one brand umbrella, um, but relies on the franchisees to distribute the products. So for example, a QSC brand may have restaurants in multiple cities around the world, and each one um, could run campaigns targeted to the local market but the global marketing organization um, wants to be sure each campaign will adhere to the global brand standards and, um, and draws only on messaging and other content that has been approved for public facing use. So um, distributed marketing platforms do enable large complex organizations with master sub-brand relationships and attendant partner hierarchies to maintain brand consistency through our self-service interface. 
Um, so I think that the core capabilities to invest in would include uh, direct and indirect marketing campaign execution, um, content distribution, uh, management of marketing development funds, and of course, local marketing automation. And so Campaign Factory, which is an extension of Campaign Studio, is an example of a tool that enables you to host multiple marketing automation instances within one platform. And so this capability is called distributed marketing because it allows you to manage campaign workflows, um, design golden templates that can be pushed to all downstream instances um, and maintain brand governance all from one place. That's awesome. It's something I see coming up a lot in the community is like people who are grappling with this challenge of how do I have this global brand and how do I make sure that each individual franchise can have its own but also roll up. So thanks for exploring that. I, I really appreciate that. Um, so finally, I've got one more question for you. Um, I'm not sure who would be best to answer this one, so feel free to jump in. So can you talk a bit more about how unifying that brand voice helps with consistency amongst the teams who are working on a project? Sure, I'll take that up. So um, when when there are multiple teams working on a project, one thing that they, they usually strive to achieve is having a single... Uh, Single, single identity, all the brands, and ever since we, we are knowing brand establishment, all the brands strive towards having a single identity. Now, that identity may not just be what the brand is. It's basically the entire brand equity rests on what your brand stands for. What does your brand look? How does your brand talk? What is the content that your brand talks? So overall, creating a brand personality is sort of a dream of every every marketer that, that's out there. Now, uh, this has evolved. It's evolved with respect to channels that you go to. It's evolved with respect to the causes that you stand for. It has evolved to uh, what what is it that you're talking across different channels. So when, uh, and and the, um, the baffling variable here is the number of teams who are involved with. So it isn't just one marketer who's who's responsible for creating an entire brand persona. It is a creative, it is a content team, it is a legal team, it is the marketing team. There are so many, it's the social team. There are so many different teams who are involved in the single objective of creating a brand persona. Now, if we do not have a single brand voice, every team is doing their own bit and who's left confused is the end customer. I, as a customer, do not know precisely what a brand stands for. I may know the utility of a brand, but I do not know how to relate with the brand. So ultimately, the mission field here is not having an equity, not having a single identity. So when we have a marketing automation tool, and, and that's a distributed tool that we have across geographies, we know there is a single source of truth for that brand. We know we can automate the creatives that go into putting together. There are, there are certain visual elements which are recycled and used across different communications. There is a content team across geographies, and it is easier to really draw sinks in different geographies, locations, product communications. Uh, it's easy to have uh, a repository of things that we can put together and still abide by creating that uh, brand identity. So this, um, this unification of the brand voice, it helps in drawing the consistency if we are using a single source of truth, if we are using related platforms, which all the players have the access to, and, and they, can, they can really take that single thing out there with their respective customers. Thank you. That's really great. And I, yeah, I think, again, it's a big challenge that people face, particularly, as you said, like when you're working with lots of different teams, trying to make sure everybody has that single source of truth and understands what that is. So, yeah, thank you very much.
So I don't see any more questions in the Q&A and we're at time. So I just want to round up by saying a big thank you to both of you for joining us today and sharing your knowledge, your expertise and your experience with marketing automation. It's been really great to hear how you've been using it in your situations and I'm sure that everybody's learned a lot from it. So thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it, it was very early for you, Jaden. I hope you get to go and have a quick nap before you have to start work. Um, yeah, really great, really grateful. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you for having us. All right, take care, folks. Thanks everyone for joining. Bye. Bye.